Hello and welcome to the Old Golden Black for this preview of the game against Manchester City. Now stay tuned, we've got a special guest later on in the video so from Manchester City, so make sure that you keep tuned for that. Now it's hard to believe that 16 years ago Wolves and Manchester City were fighting it out for the Division 1 title and with another team from the Birmingham area and it's amazing to think how different our fortunes have been since then. Wolves of course going down to League 1 and in the Premier League, Manchester City being consistently in the Premier League and have had seasons where they've struggled to stay up. They've won the league three times now since then as well. So it's quite incredible, really, the transformation of Manchester City. And hopefully it's one that we will... we will That will happen to us. <laughs> I would love to be a fly on the wall in the boardroom tomorrow just to see the conversations that go on between Laurie Dalrymple, Jeff Shee and the hierarchy there at Manchester City as well. Now it's difficult to predict how Wolves are going to set out tomorrow because, of course... The champions and we all know how great Manchester City are at playing football and Guardiola has got his team to play to such amazing levels and we've all seen that documentary now of the last couple of days it's incredible to watch a master like that at work and I expect it to be a very very difficult game for Wolves tomorrow now Nuno has been adamant over the last couple of months that he's going to play the way the Wolves play and have played all last season we're not going to change but I think there does have to be a slight sort of mentality shift tomorrow about we will create chances, I've no doubt about that, but we need to be defensively sound, which we've not been in the last two games, conceding four quite sloppy goals, and most of which came from individual areas as well. So if they can be eradicated tomorrow, something could happen. Now, there have been a lot of calls for Moutinho to be replaced by Sace or Dendonka in midfield to just shore up the back three a little bit. Now, I don't think that's going to happen. I think Moutinho's been superb. People criticising his delivery as well at free kicks. I don't think that was his fault in particular. I thought that he was taking free kicks that usually would have been suitable for a left footer, but without Barry Douglas anymore, we haven't got that option in the squad. That's something as well that needs to be addressed. The other main squad issue in general is the fact that Jota and Costa were hooked off at half time in the last game. Is Traore going to start over one of those two? Personally I wouldn't start Traore still, not because he's any worse than either of the two players that I've just mentioned but because he's more of an impact sub from the bench and I would much rather see him coming on for the last 20 or 30 minutes than Costa coming on for the last 20 or 30 minutes. I think he's so powerful and strong running the ball out it's going to give us that extra option. And as as well, I think lots of people talked about how that Jota and Costa and Cavaliero like the ball played in front of them to run onto and Traore likes it at his feet to run with. And that's something that either we'll have to change or Traore will have to adapt the way that he plays to match our style. And the other slight concern for me is how good Benjamin Mendy was at left wing back for Manchester City last week against Huddersfield and how poor Matt Doherty was at right back. They're going head to head now tomorrow and it concerns me a little bit that Doherty's perhaps low on confidence after last week but he's got the chance now to pick himself up and if he plays well against Benjamin Mendy, if he manages to control him, then that's going to be an enormous confidence boost and hopefully he'll be able to do that tomorrow. Now we've seen Wolves raise their game for the big teams a number of times in our in our recent history. Manchester United back in 2004, Man City themselves in 2010, Liverpool away in 2010 and 17, Chelsea at home as well. I think the atmosphere at Molyneux, if it's like it was against Everton, it's worth a goal. And if Wolves can just get a lead in a game, God knows what could happen. Perhaps we can get three points against the champions. That would be quite amazing. I expect that Manchester City are going to score with the firepower that they've got we've got to be able to try and contain them a little bit. I think in midfield it would be a decent battle, but I do think that their their attack is stronger than our defence. Anyway, as promised, I asked Stephen from the esteemed company channel, uh, YouTube channel, Manchester City Vlogger, to give us some thoughts on the game tomorrow and give us a little bit of a deeper perspective on Manchester City. Hey there guys, I'm Stephen from the channel Esteem Company, a Manchester City fan. I'm previewing the game ahead of tomorrow's 12 30 kickoff against Wolves. It's going to be interesting, isn't it? Honestly, I think City are obviously famous for loads of reasons, but I don't think this is a surefire set in stone victory, mainly for reasons of complacency. Now, City are obviously phenomenal these days, but there is a chance that we can take a rifle the ball a little bit and get a bit carried away by our own brilliance, I guess. There's also the fact that we are a little bit, tiny bit post World Cup rusty. Our players have did have much of a break in general, and there's also the fact that we are playing new systems. Mendy 
loves to bomb forward. And there are some gaps in there to expose potentially. Mendy hasn't had loads of training time with Guardiola due to his injuries. So there is some gaps to gain behind there, of course. And you never know, our centre backs could be a little bit asleep if we have lots of the ball. It's potentially possible. Guardiola has cut out a lot of the kind of rustiness from this team in general. <clears throat> and he has kind of crushed a lot of the weaknesses, but there is something to get out of the walls there. They do have the players like Martino and Neves to play the balls in behind our defence and maybe play something on the counter. And also the fact that you're at home with a, a crowd roaring on you, it's like a cup final for you guys. So there is that in general as well. I'd like Wolves to sit defensively personally. I think they'd actually play into City's hands. In general, when teams do that, it tends to be really one result. City pretend to win it. And I think when Wolves played us in the, uh, the Carlin Cup, the Carabao Cup even, I thought the attack doesn't went out. Obviously, it was our second team then, but I still think that was the best way to play us because you'll get the crowd behind you. You'll get going for it. And I think, yeah, you've got more of a chance of scoring against us that, in that way. But in general, if, if Wolves defend, it's probably going to be a very long 90 minutes. In terms of young players to look out for, you never know. Phil Foden, a very prodigiously talented, he's 18 year old now, just turned 18. He's a very skillful player. And I wouldn't be surprised if he gets some, some minutes on the pitch, given the fact that Kevin De Bruyne is recently injured. And uh, I think uh, we'll maybe see. I think mean, that's probably the only young player involved, but he's a very exciting, young, gifted player. Maker. One probably make the England squad at some point in the season. I would not be surprised if he makes his debut for England, given how talented he actually is. And the, and the documentary that everyone was talking about, well, I'm a City fan, so I absolutely loved it, of course. It wasn't exactly panorama, but it didn't need to be. It just needed to be fun. It needed to show different sides of the players. Uh, and I loved it. I mean, I don't think there's anything negative to take from it, really. The people were expecting some deep-seated investigations of Manchester City, well, they were asking for the wrong thing. Of course, of course, they wanted to be there in the background, and they were only going to show the good moments from the incredible season, let's be honest. Anyway, May the best team win tomorrow. So thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and drop your thoughts in the comment section down below. But for now, I'll see you tomorrow after the game. Enjoy yourselves and shout loud. There are no words to describe what Ruben Neves has just done to hit the ball and volley it into the top corner. I said on Friday he added another classic to his collection and boy that collection's just got even bigger.